beauty blogger Khadija O oh was brutally stabbed over 50 times, including on her face, until she was unrecognisable. Khadija was the unfortunate victim of an elaborate plot by her alleged killer, Sharaban K. Welcome or welcome back and thanks for being here. Now if you haven't checked out my other true crime channel yet where I cover child related true crime cases then make sure you do that after this video. That channel is called A Wicked World and I'll leave the link for it in the description box below. Since the case I'm covering today took place in Germany, due to German privacy laws they only released the first name and the last initial of everyone involved in the case. Now you would think that when someone was planning on committing a horrible crime, especially murder, they would plan it through thoroughly so they wouldn't get caught. Well that's not necessarily the case in today's story. These two criminals not only had an incredibly stupid reason for their crime in the first place, but they also didn't think it through at all. On August 16, 2022, a woman by the name of Sharaban K, who was from Munich, Germany, told her parents that she was going to Ingolstadt to speak with her ex-husband. Sharaban was a 23-year-old woman of German-Iraqi descent, and she was a beauty blogger on Instagram. She had recently split up with her husband, who had then kicked her out of their shared apartment, so she was forced to go live back with her parents, and Sharaban was not exactly happy about that. So as it got later in the day and Sharaban still had not returned home after going to meet up with her ex, her parents began to get a little worried. They tried calling Sharaban multiple times, but to no avail. So instead, they decided to get in their car and go out and look for her themselves. They were driving around the area in which they believed Sharaban had traveled, when suddenly her parents saw her black Mercedes coupe parked in a quiet residential neighborhood near the Danube River. So they got out of their car and went over to the Mercedes to see if they could find any sign of their daughter or where she had gone. But when they opened the car door, there they found something horrifying. In the back seat, there was a body of a woman and it looked to be their daughter, Sharaban. They immediately contacted the police. Once the German police arrived, they discovered that the body was that of a young woman with long black hair and she had been stabbed at least 50 times. Her face in particular was badly injured. There were several knives that were said to be found in the surrounding area. However, none would end up proving to be the murder weapon. Officials, as well as Sharaban's parents, identified the body as being that of Sharaban. After that, authorities would make an announcement to the public, saying that Sharaban had been involved in a very violent crime, and they were looking for any information that might lead them to a suspect. However, after an autopsy was underway on the body that was discovered, the medical examiner would realize that the fingerprints on the body did not match up to those that they had on record for Sharaban. Additionally, the dental records and DNA also did not match up to her. Police were initially extremely baffled after learning that the victim was not Sharaban. Authorities then began looking into missing persons cases. When they came across a woman named Khadija O, oh, who had just recently been reported as missing. And this woman looked an awful lot like Sharaban. Khadija was actually a 23-year-old Algerian beauty blogger from Heilbronn. She and Sharaban not only were both beauty bloggers, but they also had the same long dark hair, a similar olive-colored complexion, and they both wore similar types of heavy makeup. So why had this woman who looked so much like Sharaban been found dead in the back of Sharaban's Mercedes? The two women lived over a hundred miles apart from one another, and at first authorities could find no connection between the two. But then when investigators looked into Sharaban's cell phone and social media, they discovered that she had actually been making fake Instagram profiles. Over the last few weeks, Sharaban had created these accounts, then contacted women who looked similar to her. 
She had then tried to convince each of these women to meet up with her in person by coming up with various schemes, such as telling them that they would get free makeup if they did. But Sharaban actually wouldn't end up meeting any of these women, as she decided in the end that none of them looked enough like her. After she reportedly evaluated at least five different women and had dismissed them for not being close enough physical matches to herself, she found Khadija. The first time that Sharaban reached out to Khadija was on August 9th, 2022, and she told her that she was working for the rapper named Loon. She then offered Khadija an opportunity to take part in one of the rapper's upcoming music videos. Sharaban had written to her saying, You don't have to do much. I'd be happy if you got in touch. The filming will take place in Offenburg. She then added that it must be kept secret until the song was released. At first, Khadija was a little hesitant. Even though she was a beauty blogger, why would a rapper just randomly reach out to her? So she sent a message to Loon herself on Instagram, asking her if the offer was indeed real. Surprisingly, Loon actually answered back, telling her that it was a scam. She said, it's fake sister, don't answer it. Undeterred by this failure, Sharaban came up with another way to try to get Khadija to meet up with her. She had opened up yet another fake Instagram profile and contacted Khadija. This time, she was able to convince Khadija to meet up with her in Eppingen, which was close to Khadija's home. Sharaban had actually enticed Khadija with the promise of a free treatment at her cosmetic studio in return for her giving her salon publicity on Instagram. Again, Khadija was a little hesitant at first. She had no idea who this person really was. But eventually, and unfortunately, Khadija agreed to meet up with her on August 16th. Now, August 16th was a day that Sharaban had told her parents she was going to meet up with her ex-husband. But instead, she had actually gone to meet up with her new boyfriend, who was named Shakir. The two had traveled together in Sharaban's black Mercedes, nearly 100 miles to pick up Khadija from her apartment. They then began to travel back to Ingolstadt. On the way, they pulled over to a wooded area where the couple then made up an excuse for Khadija to get out of the vehicle. Then, they proceeded to carry out their attack, first hitting her in the head with a heavy object, at least once, which caused her to fall to the ground. The couple had then began stabbing Khadija, and would do so 56 times in total. Additionally, Sharaban had made sure to stab Khadija's face many times so that it was disfigured, and people would not be able to tell that it was not Sharaban. After they killed her, the evil couple then took Khadija's body and lifted her up into the back seat of the Mercedes. They then drove to Ingolstadt and parked the car where it would later be discovered. And where they had parked it was actually close to where Shakir lived. A police officer who responded to the scene said that while they were unable to find the actual murder weapon, the evidence against the couple was overwhelming. Authorities also received a few phone calls from different people saying that they saw someone who looked an awful lot like Sharaban driving around various parts of Germany. And it would end up being discovered that it was indeed Sharaban. For some reason, she had never left the area, even though she had just killed someone. So, since she had been spotted in the area just the day after police had found Khadija's body, police were able to track down both Sharaban and Shakir at a local pizzeria. The couple was then placed under arrest, and Sharaban was charged with first-degree murder. Shakir was also charged with first-degree murder for being an accomplice. They are both facing life in prison if convicted. Police believed that the reason Sharaban had committed this awful act was because she wanted to fake her own death in order to get away from her family, whom she had recently been having disputes with. Authorities believed that initially it was Sharaban and Shakir's plan to go into hiding after they had killed Khadija. Now, the reason it said that Sharaban was actually having problems with her family was due to her recent divorce. Her Iraqi German family had originated from a Yazidi community in northern Iraq. The Yazidis are a Kurdish religious minority who also have very strict rules regarding marriage. Followers are expected to marry within their religion and often young. And marriages are sometimes based on social status. Yazidi marriages are considered to be for life. And if a marriage is ended, it can sometimes lead to the individual's expulsion from the community. Mm. Additionally, trying to preserve a marriage in this culture often leads to long and complicated mediation attempts by both families. So it's believed that Sharaban wanted to fake her own death in order to distance herself from her family who was likely trying to intervene 
as well as escape from the strict norms of her religious community in Germany. After they were arrested, Sharban and Shakir were additionally charged for plotting to hire a contract killer to kill the brother of Sharban's former partner. This apparently had occurred about a month before they had killed Khadija. But despite the couple giving this contracted killer a deposit of 5,000 euros or 5,460 US dollars, he had never attempted to carry out the hit. Additionally, while Shakir was being held in prison, he gave a list to a fellow inmate of people that he wanted to have killed. It was a list of witnesses which bore 13 names. Those with a plus mark next to them were to be killed, the others were just to be badly injured. Khadija's younger sister, Alam Bojema, initially found out about her sister's death through friends on social media, and she was absolutely devastated. She said, I was the first to learn about the news, and I just screamed and cried. Sharban and Shakir's trial was actually supposed to start at the beginning of this year. However, there have been no further updates, so I believe it has been delayed. When the case does have its day in court, however, there are over 190 witnesses that can be called. Police have also found multiple phone chat logs that they will use as evidence in court. This case is crazy. Sharaban clearly did not think her plan through very well at all. She remained in the same area after killing Khadija. Then she left a trail of her communication with Khadija and the other women whom she had spoken with via her fake Instagram profiles. If you're going to go as far as killing someone and faking your own death, you would think that you would plan it through a little bit more thoroughly than this. It's sad that Khadija had to die for such a stupid reason, too. Sharban could have just disappeared instead and not killed an innocent person. And also maybe accomplished her plan of starting over. But I don't know. Thank you to all the patrons of A Wicked World. Now, there's even more of A Wicked World on Patreon. So check it out at patreon.com slash awickedworld or use the Patreon app. You'll have access to exclusive videos each month and more. Any support truly helps to make sure the victims never get forgotten and to highlight the shortcomings of society associated with each case. Do you have a suggestion for a case you'd like to see me cover? If so, send me an email at awickedworldtruecrime at gmail.com.